So in this lesson, we're going to address the jump issue that we currently have with our player. And so right now, even though whichever player you chose jumps, the player can just keep jumping. And of course, we don't want that. So we're going to add to that script that we have right now. I actually have a separate script. So if I look at this right now, I have my jump up script. And that may be open here. Yeah. So if you're ever going to, um, you want to keep your original script and change it, you can either modify the existing script you have and, of course, comment out some of the stuff you don't want to use. Or it's easier sometimes just to make a copy. So you do not want to copy this. This is the uh, information Unity puts in when you create a script. And we definitely need the name of this, the script that we're going to be using. So we don't want to create a new script and then try to put this in. It's going there. You would start copying from here. And then when you create a new script, um, if you create a new one, you would paste it starting here. Leave these things alone. So anyway, um, I'm going to switch scripts on my player. So whenever you uh, switch scripts, you, you don't have to delete the script. Just remove it from the game. Uh, remove component. And then I'm going to add, and I think it's move control. Move control. Let's try it. So notice I'm hitting it and nothing's happening. And notice also, so he cannot jump again till he hits the ground. And I control what the ground is. So there may be some things I don't want him jumping on. Him or her, the player. So um, let's take a look at what that script looks like. And I don't know that I ha I do. So we're going to add a couple lines of code. So again, you might want to make a new script. You don't have to name it this. Name it whatever you want, but make sure the name matches the name uh, in the Visual Studio, matches the name in your game. Don't have a different name here. So, and you would paste this current script you have. We're going to add this line. So that means we only want the player to jump when he's on the ground. So he can't jump in the air, which is the main thing we want. But also he may land on certain things that we don't want him jumping on. We control that. You control that in your game. So um, we're going to add that line. Everything here should be the same. I did change this because I'm going to use this variable. I'm using this variable. So um, I'm going to use it. It's up here. So I'm using it. Notice I'm using it two places. Uh, you can use the variable as many times as you want to. And all you have to do is type this. The computer knows all this. So I'm getting the rigid body when the game first starts. And then I'm going to uh, um, come down here and use it to add force for my jump. I'm, I don't want to use it to add force for my movement. So let me zoom this in a little bit. So I replace this, and you can delete it if you want. We're now moving with our transform.translate, which we used before. We're moving horizontally left to right. And notice we're using our speed. We can control the speed of movement because we're using our variable. And it's a public variable. So this will change this speed in the game we'll take a look at it in a second that's why we use variables so that we can con uh, control them in the game and also uh, use them down below without having to type all this information we're using it twice we're using it to move left to right our horizontal movement and here's the variable we're using here so we don't have to type all this information every time and then we're using the move vertical variable here so we can move forwards and backwards. And again, we want to multiply times our speed. We could put time dot delta time inside here, but I think we'll do that next lesson. Um, that's what this does. Um, it uh, um, makes the player move the same speed. It's, it's uh, frame independent, so it doesn't depend whether you have a fast computer or a slow computer. It tries to make it play the same speed. Uh, not dependent upon your processor. So um, if you have a fast processor, it's going to make it play normal. 
slow process we'll try to speed it up that's where we use time to delta time we could have stuck it here on both of them so we'll do that next time though okay so um and this is our jump so but we're adding some lines to it so now we only want to jump if the cube is on the ground so if i push the space bar and and it's got both of these got to be true i push the space bar and it's on the ground is true so that means it's on the ground um and then i want to be able to jump so if i push it once it's now going to add that force um, you're going to get the rigid body add force to make it jump up and of course we're only going up nothing on the x nothing on the z uh, and we're using this variable up here so make sure it's spelled right so i'm only going to jump up uh, and it's going to give it's going to add force to the player so it jumps up and then it makes it false so now he's no longer on the ground he can't jump so once he's off the ground in the air we, we don't want him jumping so we're going to make this cube is on the ground false now we can't jump but of course we want to jump when we land so we need to take care of that so we're going to add another um, function or method and we don't want to control it in the game so um, when we collide with something which is one of the uh, unity uh, commands if we collide with something then we want to be able to jump again so if we collide with a game object any game object in our game that we tag as ground then it's going to make it true so then it will make it true it will jump up again and once it jumps up again it's going to come down and be false again until it hits ground so it jumps up um, it's going to come down if it hits the ground it can jump again it can't jump in the air because it's no longer hitting the ground it went up in the air it's looking for ground as it's coming down if it comes down and it hits the ground it can jump if it comes down and that's not designated as ground it will not jump so let's the thing we need to do is you need to find your ground i named mine floor which is my plane and you need to designate that now you don't have to name this ground i named mine ground we can name whatever you want but whatever you name it then it better be um what you tag it up here so you're going to go to your whatever you call it um floor surface maybe even call it ground and you're going to make a new tag so you're going to click on this little arrow here add tag you're going to click this plus button and you're going to type in ground you can see the different ones i have here so you're going to type in ground and make sure if you spell it with a capital g which i did it's got to be spelled exactly that way so if i look on my floor it is tagged as ground and um now when i land after i jump once when it comes back down it sees it's on the ground and i can jump again let's remove it so now it's untagged so our script makes it on the ground once it makes it true for one jump but watch nothing happens because when the game first starts it makes the ground is true so if i look at my player and look at my move control script it shows cube is on the ground true but once I hit this once, watch that arrow. Now it's no longer true. Now it's no longer true because it's looking for ground and there is no ground. But once I come back here and tag my, make sure you're on, make sure you're on the floor here, and tag my floor as ground or whatever you designated as ground, it's ready to go. And now we can control our game and jump when we want to and have to go around things that we don't want to jump on. Every time you do this, make sure you save a scene, save as, scenes folder, and I'm going to put uh, jump control. I already have that, we'll see. And save it. You should have a ton of scenes. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about, but it saved it. 
like these many scenes. Okay, so get your game changed. Either modify your script, probably better to create a new script, copy and paste your current script and add those lines. And remember, if any script has a error message, whether you're using it or not, um, it uh, it's going to stop your game from playing. So if you have an old script you're not using it anymore, you were just fooling around with you got to delete it. It's going to give you an error message in here. And notice I have folders. You need to create folders and drag everything in there. Right click, create folder, and then uh, drag your materials inside there, drag your scripts inside there, keep it clean. And we'll talk about doing that up here next time too.